in this problem, I've got a diving board supported by two supports. So something like what it actually looks like, the way a diving board is hooked up at a swimming pool. And the first question is just asking about the qualitative directions of these forces and how can you argue it. Um, so even before I start making analytical arguments, I want to mark the center of mass of this thing. And I'm hoping what your intuition tells you is, oh, if this thing isn't somehow bolted to A, the diving board would just flop over using B as a rotation axis. So this thing has got to be actually bolted on, and A has to be pulling it down to keep it in place. Let's go ahead and look at the force of gravity exerted on the center of mass. So how do I get a little more analytical about it? Well, I have to choose rotation axes. And this is one problem where it helps to just kind of bounce around and choose different rotation axes for different questions. The first one I'm going to choose is this one. I'm going to say, let's analyze torques around that contact point with support B. Well, if I look at that point, then gravity is clearly exerting a clockwise torque with respect to that rotation axis. It causes it to flop over clockwise. And that means A better be providing a counterclockwise torque to keep the torques balanced. So that proves that the force exerted by A is actually downward. And that means the board can't just be resting on it. There has to be some kind of bolt there or hinge holding it in place so that A can actually pull down. Now let's make an argument about the force exerted by B. To do that, I'm going to bounce over to support number A and analyze torques around that rotation axis. So you're free to put a rotation axis anywhere you want because the rotation is zero about any axis you choose. Let's analyze torques about that. Well, gravity is exerting a clockwise torque through this lever arm of one and a half meters with respect to that rotation axis. So B must be exerting a counterclockwise torque, and that means the force exerted by B must be upward on the diving board. So there's part A. In part B, we're basically asked to put some numbers in to the same kind of thinking that we just did about these analyzing torque about these two rotation axes. So I'm going to label my rotation axes just to organize my calculations. That's going to be A and B sensibly enough. And let's look at the torque with respect to rotation axis A. I have B pushing up. So I'm going to write down the sum of all the clockwise torques better be equal to the sum of all the counterclockwise torques. FB is exerting a counterclockwise torque, and the force of gravity is exerting a clockwise torque here. So my clockwise torque is going to be mg through a lever arm equal to half the length of the diving board, and that's one and a half meters. I didn't draw that in the picture, so I'll just do that real quick. So that's the lever arm for the force of gravity acting at the center of mass of this heavy diving board. And then my counterclockwise torques, well, FB is exerting a counterclockwise torque through a lever arm of one meter. So then I can plug in my numbers. The mass of the whole thing is 60 kilograms. G is 9.8. And then I have a 1.5 equals FB times one. So I don't even have to write the one there. And I get that the force exerted by support B is 882 newtons. Next, I analyze torques with respect to rotation axis B. So the force exerted by B is out of the picture. It exerts no torque with respect to that axis because the lever arm is zero. All I have to do is look at the clockwise torque exerted by gravity and the counterclockwise by FA. My clockwise torque again, that's gravity acting at the center of mass. And I have to do a little bit of calculation here to figure out What's the distance between the center of mass and my rotation axis? And if it's one and a half meters from the left end to the center of mass, and one meter between A and B, that leaves a half meter here for the lever arm. What about my counterclockwise torques? So FA is trying to spin the thing counterclockwise around this axis at B. And that's an unknown force. And the distance to B is one meter. So I plug my numbers in, 60 times 9.8 times 0.5 equals FA times 1, so I'm not going to write the 1. And I get the force exerted by support A, and that comes out to 294 newtons. 
okay, so the problem is really solved. But in part C, we're asked to verify, so come up with a check on our work by doing a force analysis vertically. So remember, this is one of the tools available to us with static equilibrium. It's not only that the torques have to balance, all the forces do also in the x and y direction. So what I'm looking for here is that the sum of all the forces in the y direction comes out to zero. It's just a check on our work. So I, another way to say that is that my upward forces better sum up to the same number as my downward forces. And I'm kind of asking, is that true? So let's look at our upward forces. There's only one of them. It's FB, and that's 882 newtons. Let's look at our downward forces. There's two of them. FA is pulling down with 294 newtons. And MG is pulling down. Gravity is pulling down on the center of mass. And when I compute that total downward force, I get 882 newtons. So we've verified that the net force comes out to zero.